Dale Hubbard, welcome to another segment of our road trip through the Bible. And we want to talk about an upper room. We talked about that a little bit before. We talked about the fact that before the death of Jesus, he met with his disciples, his apostles, in an upper room. He talked to them. He told them what was going to happen. He washed their feet. He told them that one was going to betray him. And it was not many days later. Not many days later that Jesus was crucified and that he rose again. And in Acts chapter 1, we find Jesus after he has been risen. And Jesus is at the place where he told the apostles he would be. And, and he talks to them and he goes back to the Father. And he told them he was going to go back to the Father even before he died. And then in verse 12 of Acts chapter 1, he told the disciples, the apostles, that he was going back to the Father, and they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they entered, they went into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, Simon, and Judas, the son of James. Not to be confused with Judas Iscariot, who had taken his life after betraying Jesus. Here are the apostles. They're in an upper room again. Except this time, Jesus is not with them. He's gone back to be with the Father. He'd spent three years preparing them for what they needed to do after he goes back to heaven. And so now they're gathered together. And verse 14 says, They continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And then it talks about them going and replacing Judas. They needed someone to take his place and, and the things that transpired there. Matthias was chosen. Matthias was chosen to take Judas' place. And then we know that later on, Paul, Saul, as he was earlier known as, was the last apostle that was added. But let's think about that upper room where they're gathered now for a moment. Now, the responsibility is on them. Now Jesus is not around, and they're going to need to go and do exactly what Jesus told them to do in what we call the Great Commission, to go into all the world and share the good news with others. Now they were going to need to be the examples. They were going to need to show God to other people. Isn't that where we're at? Isn't that the same position that we're in today, that we need to be sharing the good news with Jesus? We need to be telling people. We need to be showing people God through our lives. Yes, as these 11 gathered, as they gathered in an upper room, they had seen so much that could encourage them. They had seen the path that Jesus had lived before them. We have the opportunity, not literally, but through God's word to see that. And just as these men assumed their responsibility, just as they began to go out in Colossians 1.23, said, carry the gospel to the entire world, they did it as well. I hope that from this upper room, we take the fact that we need to take on our responsibility. We need to be followers of Jesus, and we need to show people the life that Jesus lived through our life. Thank you for joining us for another road trip through the Bible.